Okay. We're here. We're back. Oh no, uh, I'm starting late tonight. Uh, want to stream earlier, but, uh, got, uh, a little sidetracked. Welcome, everyone. We're gonna continue the run. We're gonna see how far we can get here. Uh, I, I had, I had, I had to, like, guess, uh, how many stars I had left, or moons I, I had, I had gotten already. I think I was at, like, 7.45, so I was, like, I'll put that in the title. Um, I forgot, I forgot to, to replace that, actually, so... What we're gonna do is we're gonna finish up uh, grinding for coins. I was grinding sort of off stream. And once we do this, we're gonna get the. As you can see, uh, since the last time we we were together, I was uh, I grinded to 99, got a lot of the outfits, got Bowser's outfit, got the the, the bright outfit, uh, and the metal Mario. But we're gonna finish off the. Getting all the outfits uh, here with Gold Mario. I figure it'd be fitting to finish the game with Gold Mario. Let's uh, let's do that. Let's go over to here. Ah. I'm not sure how much we're gonna get immediately done today. We're gonna see how much we can get done. Uh, I was actually hoping that we could, hoping we could finish up the uh, the run tonight, but I don't know it's getting, it's, it's gotten late. So there it is. Yep. Uh, okay. What does it say? This outfit just goes all the way with the gold thing. There you go. Old face and everything. Alright. Now, we have to head back to... We're gonna go through here. Uh, sort of pick up all the remaining coins and things. So, well, not all of them, but some of them. And then we're going to go uh, to the next kingdom. I think the Luncheon Kingdom is next. First of all, Mushroom Kingdom. Get the main coins there. Da bum bum. Bum 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 bum. I know where a lot of the ones I'm missing are. Uh in some some of the worlds. Uh, but the first half or so. The well, three I missed here missed are right over here. Went around and I found some where some of them are. Come on. Yeah, but I didn't want to grab them off screen, so or off screen off stream. There we go. I guess we could uh Talk to Toadette while we're here. N knock off a bunch of, like, a ton of these, uh, achievement stars. I think we've got, after we check in with her this time, we'll have, like, just a couple left to find. Congratulations, Prime and Ruler. Well, we're gonna do this for a little bit. Oh. So I got 
chest hunter. Not collecting space to her. I think I have a few left. I've got, um, I think I have get more coins. And I know I have to find one more, uh, Bonitor, Bonitor guy. Um, gotta find one more, got a couple more uh, races to finish for, the, for that achievement. running MVP, but I think I need the, the, another one that's beyond that MVP. <laughs> supernaturally sure-footed. Actually, Mario is supernaturally from sure-footed compared to everyone else in, in his world. <laughs> There you go. This is as long as, as I thought it was going to be. What am I actually sitting out here? I, I said, like I said, what's up? I said 745, 764. I actually underestimated. Mistake. All right. Uh, let's see. So now, we, yeah, we're six off. No, no, we're actually uh, 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 ten. Which ones here? Okay, well, there's these ones. These here. Yeah, one of these. One of the Toad Pete guys. Five more hint arts. Gotta get more souvenirs. Two more races. Moon rocks and warp holes. Okay, so mushrooms seems good for now. Good. Ah, yes, Sand Kingdom. I know where those are. Whoops, I hit the wrong button. Fine, let's go get the uh, six that I missed there. Three very sneaky coins over here. Because you just never go over here. There they are. And then... Three sneaky coins over here. Again, not a spot where you ever would really travel. So... That's way over here. I 
should have rolled there. Once again, off of, off of the the world there. Actually, now that I have all of everything, I should uh, go buy the rest of the stuff from the the vendor. Alright. And that lost moon I can't get in that kingdom. I have to go around and get the lost moon. Go around other kingdoms to get that one. Um. I know how to get that one, that moon as well. Can't do it right this moment. That's done, that's done, done. And then these six. Metro Kingdom. Boy, I don't know what I'm going to do, but that speed run that Octo wants to do. Ugh. He runs. It's not not they're not really my thing. But I mean it's not like a world record speed run or anything. It's just gonna be a be a speed run race. A speed race. So I guess that's something. It's that's all that's not as bad, but it's not much of a speed runner. I'd rather do build runs than speed runs. Gonna have to figure out something with how to stream Ocarina of Time first of all, and then uh, how to uh, how to win, how to actually win the race against him, a guy who's played it the game way more than I have. All right, so there's three back here that I missed. This my not humming because I will be I will I will be tested. Come, come two weeks from now I will be tested. Uh, what's in here? Another three are in here, which you only I only went in here one right there. I just I only went in here once and I just never saw that. This is for, for the um the night the nighttime invasion thing. I see. I see the challenge screen is still from last night's stream. That's okay. Whatever. There you go. Okay, and that's good. Alright. We caught up now. Snow is good. Seaside. Right. 
Mansion ruined. Okay, so we're on seaside now. Ah, oh, did it again. So here's where I'm or I've gone I've lost again. So I don't know where the other six coins are in this area. Got some more stars to do or moons to do. One right in the middle of that. Oh, well, there's gotta be a... There's always a thing to look at with these. Oh. Huh. No, no, no uh, taxi, no... Uh... I love how this giant glass looks, sparkling in the sun setting sun. Is there anything more romantic than the sea? Oh, and a power moon came in with the tide. It's all yours now. All this travel has really given me quite an appetite. I wonder where I could get a nice meal. And there's just one just in here. Inside the glass, and then there's this, which is gonna gonna cover the star I couldn't get in. Yeah, like the mode. Oop! 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 side of the glass too, right there. Didn't see that before. Let's uh, not warp too, too much, because we, we need the opportunity to find those coins, where they are. Keeping an eye out. Thanks, dude, is there. race. Hmm. 
Oh, no. Maybe you could like fast go up. Uh, please, spatial reasoning. Wow, I'm doing really badly. Master swim? Probably not. It's hard to control these. Oh. This is gonna be a hard one, I think. Oh boy. So, I guess rocket. Okay, I think I'm supposed to use the rocket uh, fl rocket flowers, which I don't like using because they're in they're really hard to control. If you're unless you're just like not touching the control stick at all. Oh my goodness, it's so hard to control. Have to do use that like if I'm gonna win. Gah. Oh, I pushed the wrong button. Nomination. Any other cup? There's one thing. Gold. I mean, but uh, Master Cup. Alright, let's see what Gold Gold Bro does. Just copy him. Ah, 
There's a flower over here. Right. Can I just do this? Can I just go... Why, why, why would you do that? I was trying to go up. Okay. This time. I don't really, I don't really need to do the that, because you don't really get that much advantage on that. No! No! Good thing you had those little forks there. Alright, good. Not as hard as I thought it would be. shelf in the deep ocean. Hey, there's three. Awesome. I miss these. This seemed to heal you. Like I figured it would. I didn't dress for swimming. We did not. That's a heart. I've got those. There's two here. Helen, maybe.
Oh, there's lots of verticality in underwater levels. Or there usually is, so... Don't shoot water at me. Be a new one in here. Nope, there's nothing to do here, he says. It's odd. Well, let's look at it, because it's pointing right right there. So it's pointing right there. I don't know. That's a nice little touch there. Because I dove from a higher elevation. I dove further in the water. So that's nice. Oh, right. I even saw it in that moment from a distance and I just forgot about it. Sitting here. The highway east. Can I explore this underwater highway? We need three coins. Shadow, the coin was giving off an odd shadow there. He's right here. I'm nearby. Might as well swing by there. Just the bubble maker. Oh, there is it. There it is. Obvious one. Game poke. Not done here. Mm -hmm, I see. I think I see. Oh. Uh. 
Nice. Which one I go into? I'm gonna just oh, go in here. Alright. Uh, three more elusive coins still to find, but we can go to this next one here. Oop. Ah, these good notes. All right, I'm gonna need cheap cheap for this. Check that one off. This side is almost done. One more over here. Keep looking out for those purple coins. Wait, it's moving. There it sure is. Means it's gonna be a bird, yep. Ugh! Get back here! Ugh, he was, he was even low. One of these guys. Where are you now? It's a bird. Yeah! Oh. Beautiful. Can't teleport yet. Um, you know, again, let's, let's not teleport too much. Let's look around as we go. It's probably in some really obvious place that I've never just haven't think about to look yet, like the other coins. The music. <laughs> Wait, it's come back. Another bird? No. Oh. Staying stall. One in here. Yep, music notes again. Where am I? Ah. Get get out of the way. Whoa. Plenty over here. What up, though? Boom, boom. 
I got those. What's this? Why is there a ledge here? Any benefit to this ledge? That's very odd. Doesn't seem to be anything there. Uh, let's find one of those. There you go. One of these dudes. in front of another one as well. Oh! Oh, it's a moon. I thought it was maybe a purple coin. They're just... <laughs> purple coins, I get more excited about, about purple coins because they're a, lot harder, they're a lot harder to find, so... West High... Underwater Highway West? I haven't explored the here all the way. It's saying explore! Have I explored enough? Head in here. <laughs> Two in here, right? Sure is. Oh, these are always interesting. Boop. Okay. Now I'll just stop fiddling with them. Ow. Oh, I lost my heart. My uh, extra hearts, too. Oh, I was trying to get to the heart. Obviously, we should do this, right? Yeah. Two moons here. So, a fairly straightforward little map. Something underneath here, maybe. Da 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 do do do.
Mm. Well, let's get that. All right. Oh boy. Yeah, I should have to kill all of them. That's yeah, possible. Assuming this is the right solution here. Nope. Not like a Zelda game where you deal with all the monsters and then the door opens. There's gotta be like a fake wall somewhere. I don't see any, uh,. Other paths and you can get down there via following one of these platforms but like I can't catch myself on anything can I hmm let's um uh, over here still nothing I think standing out it's definitely, well, not definitely, but it's, it's probably under there, I, I would think. Like it's it, in a secret chamber. In a hidden room somewhere. These all fake, not fake, but are there any fa are there any fake like glass sections here? I fell down here already. That just was death. So what else could it be? We all, I mean, we know, we know that there's an extra like sort of space, like there's extra space down beneath the, the maze. Maybe if we f if we go to the spot where the middle of that extra space is, being like ground pounded or something, wouldn't it be around here somewhere? Stumped in a stumped in a while in this game. I, oh, oh, here we go. Yes. Okay. No problem. Just do. How do we do this? Basically, there's an opening. On one of the, yeah, I need to have this this part open this way. There you go. Cause now, oh, so now when I do this, it opens up. Nice. Nice. 
some fun puzzles, puzzles like that in, in Odyssey. I really like the hint art moons. I hope that they keep doing those in later games, future games. They're really cleverly done. Even if they are annoying sometimes to solve. The moon down here. Oh, wait, wait. Nope, it's this way. Like this? Moon right here somewhere? Oh, it's in the sand, I see. Right here. Woo! One right here. Wait, wait, just popped up. There it is. Should be right here. I already went up here, though. Taking the controller. Ah, I see. One of these. Didn't notice the shine last time. Wink. And those are done. How are we doing? 69 out of 71. Only two left. And let's swim back over here. And keep an eye out for things. Now I know that the purple coins can can be found. They can all be found before you even complete the game. So there are no post-game purple coins, like like what I theorized. But well, un unlike what I theorized. But oh, they're just really elusive. And that's been that's been the hardest. Uh, Thing to completing to doing 100% of this game. Visible wall there. Got those. I'm just hanging up over here. I don't even need him, I just need the trampoline. Alright. And the one missing... Number 49. Talking to you, do you have anything to say about that one? Your path to bubble lane. Need to find another one of those paintings. Ah. Doesn't really. Well, actually, wait. Hang on. Let me use this. Let me see if I can find the, the secret like area of this world and then it'll might give me a like be able to, to glean a clue off of that. So that's definitely the area right there. But I cannot make out the painting that it's showing. It's too high for any other elevation. Because I can't, I don't know which painting leads to this world. Uh, so three coins left to get. Don't know where they are still. Don't know where else to look either. Oops. Maybe you have to. Ugh. We have to leave it for the for next time, maybe. I was really hoping to finish the stream, but because I started so late. I don't know. 
What are we at? What are we sitting at? 781, was it? Yeah, 781. And we're still saving Dark Side of the Moon and Darker Side of the Moon for like, for last. Because I want to save some new content for the end. 803! Ugh, we're less than 200 off now. But for now, let's... We've done the stars we can, the moons we can, in a seaside. Um, let's just go to, over to luncheon and get the moon rocks there. Also, six coins missing from that spot. <laughs> hmm. Moon rock, hit it. What are you doing? What's this guy doing? I think there's something going on in the plaza. Welcome. Head to Peronza Plaza for a cooking, cooking carnival. We prepared our Spanish stew for the fest. Thanks to our volcano, it's never turned out better. What? <laughs> I guess he's just there to greet new uh, people who are just coming into the kingdom. Uh, oh, whatever. We'll walk. The coins probably aren't, aren't hidden in any like obvious places because I've been to all the obvious places. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Get in there. Oh, rabbit. Oh, a taxi cab guy. That's good. Wait, I think I already have the rabbit. That rabbit, specifically. Ugh, rats. Taxi cab guy. No way, no way. We, we've already met in the Sand Kingdom, Metro Kingdom, and Cascade Kingdom. You hop all over the place, don't you? Here, here, a gift. Yeah, yeah so do you. Stop popping around so we, we, we can end your quest line, mister. Look at top, look at top this place. I mean, tip top, sky high, and maybe above and beyond. Whoa. You sure you're up for this? Because I know a place. Well, head some, uh, uh, head out soon as soon as I grab some stew. The moon, I assume he means. This place is festive. Welcome, welcome. We have so much stupendous stew that we're able to hold our big cooking carnival. Oh look, everyone's so happy. Oh, I came to to tootling here with a friend, tootling, but he has gone off somewhere. He's quite the fruit lover, so he has surely popped onto someone's head to take in all the flavors around here. Oh, good. I need to find one more guy. That's perfect. One more, uh, hat, hat friend. Hat bro. And here's Peach. <gasps> Look, she's in little, a little, like, uh, farmer's outfit. Oh, cute. Between the bright colors and the delicious smells, this place is a, is a delight. Everything here is as, as delicious as delicious can be. But I accidentally bit into this power moon. It was hiding in a bowl of stew. You can take it. Yes. Nemo! Yes, there's, there was a, 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 a fellow friend, uh, Warrior Mo, Wario Mine, who came, who came in last stream. He told me that there are 999 moons uh, if you want to 100% like, the game. So, good to see you, Nemo. It's a late stream today, but, um... <laughs> it has some bite, yeah. Apparently, Metro's Kingdom uses it for to power their city, so... I heard there's a kingdom that's caught in a constant storm. I'd like to see that. Probably the Ruined Kingdom, I would assume. Hey, friend. Hey, uh, you find any turnips, plop them right in the soup? Yeah, I, I did that one already. 
Did I not have me he has no more to do? Alright, let's uh let's get this moon rock this uh, moon rock unlocked. Unfortunately Unfortunately you're right, Nemo. There's but there should have been there should have been way more of that kingdom. I think it was the best kingdom, it's so cool. Radio. Right from the top. Good to see you, Nemo. How you been? I'm not sure how long I'm gonna be streaming tonight because it's a little late on where I am, but it's already late. I don't know, but good to see you. There we go. Yeah, yeah. The, like, th think about it, right? Like, they, they deliver in so many levels, right? But then they go ahead and they make stuff like Mario Party Top 100 and uh, the new Paper, Paper Mario games. And it's like, Nintendo, you know what people want, right? From, Paper, from, Paper, from uh, Mario Party? Like, why don't you just make, make them look like the first six? And then you're good, you know? You know what people want from your from your Paper Mario games, right? They want like an RPG, so make that. <laughs> like it seems like sometimes they're not willing to just do the obvious. Sometimes their 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 need for it to innovate is a little bit misguided. Ugh, I think. Oop. 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 There you go. Uh, let's see. Get one of these dudes. Yeah, she's been well. That's good. Yeah, just a little misguided on exactly uncertain. No. Oh, <laughs> Right, you can just go through right through right through that. Yeah, there's a little misguided on certain game series. Is <laughs> series? Oh. They didn't mind me using them as a f flicking thing. Yeah, I've already done this one. Haven't I? Yeah, I have. Right. It's this one down here that I need. So if you've been on Discord recently, Nemo, you've seen that um, Octo wants to make, wanted to do, he insisted that we do a speedrun of Ocarina of Time. I mean, it's more of a speed race. It's not like world, world record or anything like that. It's just a race between race between me and him. And um, he, ins again, he insisted. I'm not much of much of a bet, much for betting. I'm not, I don't like, 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 like to bet too much, but um. He insisted that there be stakes involved, so, um, 
I'm gonna have to figure out. If you go into score, you can see that uh, I didn't really want to think of a punishment for Octo if he lost. So, some of the guys in the Discord are coming up with ideas. Um, and I have to like, I'm gonna have to figure out how I can possibly out outspeed Octo at Ocarina of Time because he's he's played a lot more than I have. I've only beaten it a handful of times. He beats it like once every year. <laughs> Well, <laughs> play through the Call of, World, Call of Duty World War II campaign. I, it depends. It depends. I think I think he, he said that it had to be done done like a punishment that was done with, within within an hour. He play <laughs> if he loses, he plays MGS Five. That would well maybe, but I think it was it has to be something within the hour. But he did mention that as a potential like punishment or something that he would want to do in the future again looking for music that fits the theme theme is I've become a monster uh you mean like a dinosaur because if so yep already people are like you shoot like the hottest pepper, or like, ghost pepper, or whatever. I'm like, uh, I don't like, I don't like, uh, giving my body for entertainment purposes. You know. So here, let's listen to this, uh, this new song we got. What is this? Uh, Festival 8-Bit. It's a little rough, but IMO. <sighs> I suppose you're right, Nemo. This <laughs> is a little bit like a little staticky. Oh, I let me. Get up there! Get it! Get it! Oh no! Death perception, please! Oh, there I go. Try it again. We weren't even done done the song all the way through once. We need to get. We need to at least do that. This is that, that opening bit. Get off that. Uh, I hate to practice to not not sing along with songs, because the next game I'm probably gonna play. Well, not the next one, but in two weeks, 
Xenoblade Chronicles 2 comes out, I'm gonna be hum like, if I don't control myself, I'm gonna be humming constantly because the songs in the game are incredible. Just amazing. Ooh. 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 Ooh, sunk. I just do it, like... It's not even me trying to, like... You know, it's nice people, people will, um... Do things on stream, or say things on stream, to fill in, in like, time, to fill in space. I don't even do that. I just... It's a catchy song, so I hum along to it. I'm really excited that um, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Uh, well, I mean, this game's wrapping up. I'm probably going to stream again tomorrow, and then that'll probably be the conclusion of this, the game. Um, there, won't be any, there won't be anything left to really left to do, so. Um, well, I have a few um, requests, fan requests, uh, viewer requests. Oh, goodness gracious! Oh! Um, so, we got, like, so, uh, one viewer wanted me to play, uh, Digimon Cyber Sleuth. That probably, that's, I think they might put that down lower in the, in the, um, priority. Uh, then, like, we also have, someone wanted me to play Persona 5. Um, there's a game, there's a, a game, uh, recommendations channel on our Discord if you're interested and, you know, you wanted to make a request as well. Um, let's see what else. Two weeks from now, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 comes out. Um, oh, a Hat in Time. I want to play a Hat in Time. Uh, that's already out. So I might play that, like, next, possibly, if I, if I play this, if I beat this game quickly and, you know, wait for another game, wait for Xenoblade 2 to come out. I might go to Hat in Time. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's gonna be a pretty good year for. Oh, it's gonna be a pretty good like. Uh, oh, pretty good like. Um, what is it? Like twelve months or so. For for. JRPGs, which is gonna be cool. Oop. Like, yeah, no guarantee that that, that that game will be played on stream, but it's um nice to have uh some recommendations from people. And then, of course, in addition to all those games, that like new games that we want to play on stream, we're still doing uh, the Final Fantasy Saga. Like we're gonna go through the whole series, the mainline series at least. Uh, and then, of course, I want to go back periodically and play Dark, Dark Souls, like one, two, and three, because those games are phenomenal, and I want to do more build runs. Those are those are always most for make for interesting um, playing, I think. Alright, let's
Am I missing here? Underneath this, maybe? I jump right with, with, with him. Or no. There you go. <laughs> Off again. Over here. Yeah, 68. So, I got like um, I think like two months ago or a month ago or so, I did the the kill what you see <clears throat> regenerator run in Dark Souls uh, 2, all bosses. Um, longer than took longer than I thought it would, but it was it was had some challenging moments, but uh, it was really fun. And I want to do the same thing in Dark Souls 3. Oh, Dark Souls 3, kill what you see regenerator run all bosses. Um, wouldn't be wouldn't be too too bad I, I think. Uh, but I have the, the the route, I have to get the my route routed. So we're gonna so once if we get a chance to do that, that would be cool. Why are you why are you buying Nemo? It's a, it's a, it sounds like the, like, the, like the trumpet trumpet sound. I'm on a pee here. <laughs> no, you're not wrong. Oh goodness. Here I am. Yes, words that sound like words that um that represent a sound is an automatopoeia. So, woof, right? Meow. Those are automatopoeias. Did I do this one? No, this looks, yeah, I've done this one already. Mm 
Okay, so climb up the mountain here. Oh, rats. trick to this. Ah! That's right, the Potobo. Just bring yourself across that way. Rats. Try again. Make sure, make sure I don't lose that Potobo. Walking on nothing. Fourth place. Timing was is kind of off. Ah, oh, why did I? Why did that happen? Hmm. We're gonna have to see what um. Oh, there's a fork on the on the uh, left side there. Wonder maybe Gold Bro will try and go after that. We'll see. That's a regular cup. That's nothing. Gold bro. G O L D. Gold, uh, Gold Koopa man. He's a guy I want to watch to see what he does. He's got some tricks up his sleeve. Rats. Oh, I didn't mean to do the back, the long jump. I meant to do the back, back flip. Oh, look at this! Missed the jump. He does the ground pound jump right there to save the, that whole route. Try that again. Look, the, the, the platform's already there for them. What the heck? Oh, I don't like this. Too slow. Get up there. Up, 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 up. Already way ahead of me now. And now I can't do anything here. No. 
Try again. A bunch of cheaters? Oh, I was I was gonna do so well. Jump off the piranha plant? Piranha plant? Yeah, maybe. You can you can ground pound and then you get a like a like a jump boost after a ground pound. So that's another uh, way to do it. Just trying to save time there. It may not be worth saving, worth saving time. On that spot. up the triple jump. And that jump as well. I didn't really get much air from him. Can't, can't, Super Mario has trouble grabbing on that ledge. What is interesting? Rats, do it again. There you go. Gotta grab the corner. Wait, now what do you want to do? This? This? Oh, good. Gold Bros just... Oh, yes. I see. I see. Oh, gold! Gold man! Oh, it's right there. Alright, I almost got it. Uh... I see what he was do he's doing now. We go, jump, uh, stomp, jump into backflip, wall jump off of the the lava, the uh, lava turnstile looking things, and then you do a jump, dive jump onto the ca uh, cap throw, dive jump combination. This is a hard one. This is a, this is a bit of the hard, hard one of the harder uh, uh, Master Cup races. Oh, see that? Oh, there you go. That one works. Worked that that time. That's where it should. What it should have been. That's interesting. Ah, more stomp jumps from now, right? Ah, uh, get up there. There you go. Oops, I missed the... I missed the, my... The stomp jumped up, up there. It's gonna cost me. I might actually get it now. Oh, sorry. Restart it. Mm-hmm. Because of the verticality of, of the race, uh, some of the races are more ho horizontal. He's already going. That guy's already going. Little monkey. Ah. 
too early on that on that that cap throw. No, 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 no. Backflip up there. Oh, oh, this is a disaster. Hang on, let's practice this while we're up here. Woo! Oh, push the wrong button right at the last second. It could have been. I could have been it right there. I think, despite my the mess up. But yeah, you know, this is why I'm not a I'm not a Super Mario speedrunner. I couldn't imagine doing this. Oh, doing this um like constantly, like imagine having having to do things picture perfect every time. It'd be so hard. I just do that too early. Ah, oh, missed the. Oh, I missed it again. Ah. Oh. The, the triple jump by like a fraction of a like like one step Stupid prompt plant has 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 cappy areas. You know what? I could probably. I wonder if I could do a dive jump there and save time. Ugh. Just barely, yeah, it's like by like a nanosecond. <laughs> that one, that last maneuver where I angled it to go diagonally instead of the angle of the flick to go diagonally instead of straight up. That's what that's what won that one. All right. Thank you, Nemo. There's one right there. Oh, look at that. Uh, let's see. Probably go up there and then jump across. Across. Mm, the angle would have to be different for that to work. Probably just long jump right, from right, right about here. Long jump, Cathro dive jump. Yep. Uh, and there's this one here. It's kind of an odd spot. Ah, I see it. 
I could, I could walk across all, all that, or I could just do this. All right, that makes all of the moon rock moon, uh, moons. We have a few left to get though, so we are uh, four left in this world, and those six elusive purple coins, as usual. What do you got for me? Oh right, there's still a a, a monitor dude defining here. Where is he? Oh, he's probably on the roof somewhere. It's, well, not, not probably, but he might be. I checked the, everything here. Mm, the dude back there. What are you doing? Stew formula faulty. Stew formula faulty. Stuck in harsh critic mode. Repairs will require a mechanic. That your aha. Is there, is there a mechanic outfit? <laughs> well, let's change to a mechanic outfit. I want to stay as, as gold Mario, but... Mechanic outfit. Ah, uh -huh, there he is. I should forgot there was a mechanic outfit. Hey, I'm missing some. I'm missing an outfit here. Oh no, uh, I didn't mean to change. Ah, oh, whatever, it's fine. Uh... Why wear so much denim? That's a de denim pattern there. Uh, mechanic. Where were you? This is attacked a mechanic. This unit is stuck in a loop due to suboptimal stew. Now sensing critical state ending. System is normal, computing gratitude. It adds up to this result. Is that the one he was telling me about? It was not the one he was telling me about. Yeah, up there. It was gone out, sadly. Huh. Yeah, I can fix that. Uh, faster to do this. <laughs> I think it was Nintendo bashing critics in general. The optimal stew. Faulty stew. Oh, these aren't these aren't uh, fire guys. These are pan guys. Yeah. 
nothing in there. So I need fire for that. How do I get fire over here? Those, those Potobo dudes can't, um... Oh, I know where. Uh, at the beginning of the level, there are fire dudes. There are fire... What? Oh, I found him! Oh, Drat, you found me. I thought this fellow's head was a great hiding place. Really top drawer. Here, take this, leave, then leave me to my foodie dreams, would you? There you go. That was an accident. Beginning of the level, there's a fire hammer... Fire bro? They're called Hammer Brothers. So, the ones that throw hammers. So, are they just called Fire Bros? Where is he? Thought he was around here. Oh, wait. There he is. Get over here. How to go? I can't jump super high. Oh! I shouldn't have done that. I want to jump on that to elevate myself. I jump on it and not get hurt? Nope! Some place where I can get up. Oh, that one just fell as like walked into the lava. How do I get you where I want you to be? Maybe there's another fire bro. get. This isn't gonna work. There's no way to get him over there. There's this up here, but there's no way to jump that high. Can I... Nope. Shaking only makes you even throw more fireballs, so that's not the solution. Maybe up here? Max jump height, that doesn't seem possible. Uh, yeah. You can do this with, the, with this guy. Whoa, 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 camera. No. You can't, um... I was like that already. You can't, um, like, bring a... Bring a guy to you. You can't, like, boomerang him to you. Like, as soon as you... For your cap, you go to him where he is standing. So that's not gonna work. Um... Other, oh my, what other options do we have here? Deku sticks in this game? I don't know. About that. Dying from the big pot. Oh, I got it. I oh I get it. I get it, I get it, I get it. I th I think is I thought I had this thought that maybe this is one possible way to do it, but I wasn't sure if it was worth trying. Because it would require kind of a, uh, there he is. Because it kind of require a bit of a, a little bit of finesse to do, and I was like, that's a little bit. Because, here's the thing, I'm on fire right now. If I jump down onto, onto that, onto that thing, 
to that lantern at, at a light, but where, where even is it? Where even was it now? Rats. Yeah, it's up there. We haven't gone out. There's a pot over there. I doubt that's anything. I mean, it'll, it'll burn me if I get in there. I can't shoot fire as a photobo. Unless, unless the game wants me to actually dive into that pot and then do something from there. What do you want, game? Well, uh, yeah. If we were if we were to try that, if that was the answer, it'd be right here. Okay. Woo! Got it again. Try doing a a bigger jump. I think maybe if I have to. Uh, I think there's two jumps available for the potabos. The shape of the pot is, well, it's round, so it's a little bit weird. Yeah, you can, you can dash faster and you can jump, so. Uh, I have a theory that um, we need to jump into the big pot here, down here. Because there's a lantern delay and there's a pot down there. Uh, I got a clue on on one, where one of them might be. Where it is, which is that. And that's sort of like the, what I'm thinking. Dying from the big pot. We need to do a bigger jump off of this. Ugh. So close. A little more forward momentum. A little more momentum built up. I think that's where that's where the next moon is. Is in there. Jump shake. Uh, you dash faster. Bug driver. Good to see you. Uh. You dash faster with with the when you shake the with the photo bow, so you can dash or well, well you know you do a little jump I guess too, so maybe maybe is that is the the way here. All right, let's line ourselves up here with the bottom screen. Get those out of the way. Right. Oh. Get, get captured. Dun, dun, dun. Ah, little just a very close. Actually, it, 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 I looked. It, I looked it up. It's it it, it is actually. It's actually called like a ca capture. 
Because, because, you know, Nintendo and puns. I think I can make it as I... as it is, but I just need to... overcome the weirdness of the... the angle here. Yeah. <laughs> Nintendo puns. Overshot that time. Darn. <laughs> How do you think they come up with their ideas? You think, you think it, it requires a lot of, you know, coming to come and go to a meeting and you're just like, okay, guys, I have a brainstorming session right now. Caps. Mario wears a cap, right? What? A, what's a word that sounds like? They use the word cap in the English language. I don't know. Cap. Ca cap. Capture. Wait a second. People like the Pokemon. Why don't we just do kind of that kind of thing? But like, for Morrow. Oh man, there's like no. There's like no um, momentum once you're in the air. Honestly, though, I mean, like, this is, speaking of Pokemon, this is kind of like a, I know this is like a, like a, such a, an, an opinion that I have that people would just get, go crazy about, but, I love po Pokemon, right? But you know what part of Pokemon I could do without? The capturing part. I thought out of the Pokemon context. I mean, there's Nintendo, right? But anyway, uh... Because, like, for me, I really like Pokemon for, like, the cool... Like, like, the strategy of the combat and stuff. So, what really annoys me is, like... Not really, but, like, it's kind of like... Ugh, I'd rather not do it. Is all the capturing Pokemon and breeding them to have the right moves and all this stuff. And I just want to be able to go just somewhere in the game world and pick them up. Ugh! There's gotta be a way, better way to do this. You know, like, and level them and stuff, like, like an RPG, but, like, I think, like, you know, the capturing, like, process takes a, a longer than I would, would like it to. Um, capturing and breeding and, and all that. I'm really... Because Pokemon, the battle system is great for me. How, like, um... Is it sort of warning? Making your whole team. Um... But see, you can make your... Make your I think you can make your team via other things rather than just, like, capturing them. I think you can make them be a, a less finicky, like, process. Like, I mean, I, I mean, I make teams and, and stuff in every game, right? In every RPG that we, that I play. Ugh. There we go. Yeah, uh, yeah. Me specifically. Like, Octo is, is sort of new-ish. Oops. Sort of new-ish to, to RPGs. Uh... Oh no. Um, but I'm uh, I'm definitely the JRPG guy. So like I I make my teams and my my builds and stuff. Uh, the capturing team is not a foreign concept to me because I've been playing Pokemon since um since a red and blue since this is, like the first generation of Pokemon. But um, I've just never been into like. Catching all like the Pokemon, and, like you know, when I want to fight with the Pokemon, I don't want to have to kind of spend a lot of time like, bre like breeding them and, and stuff. When I can just you can just level them. Or, like TMs are nice, right? Like why can't there be like more 
where uh, there's breed there's moves that you can learn to teach Pokemon via breeding. So you breed certain Pokemon with certain Pokemon, and then they make a new Pokemon, and then you can take that the egg move that they learn and give them another, another one, and all that. It's very complicated. Well, I mean, relatively complicated. Um, clicking with. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't really click with me, I guess. Um, I mean, I, I still enjoy Pokemon a whole lot. Uh, but it's it's just... Um, not really something I... would rather do. I'd rather... Because, because I'm from a... You know, I play so many JRPGs. Uh, I just... I think I prefer when... things are in their place. You know, weapons, armor, any sort of gear. <laughs> I play it religiously. Yeah, I, I used. To, I mean, I played. I've put tons of hours into Pokemon. Um, I'm excited for the the new Pokemon RPG on the Switch. You know. Uh, I, yeah, I, I I totally forgot that it just came out yesterday. Just put the Ultra Moon. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I've been playing my 3DS, even though 3DS still mwah, great is software there, right? I've just been playing it a lot, lot like less and less, but just because I've been streaming a lot more and I don't have any means to stream 3DS games, so. And I'm, I'm liking a lot of the the looks uh, of the new Ultra Beasts. I like the Ultra Beasts. I think they look, they look pretty cool. Um, people will, will disagree on on that. Um. Yeah, yeah, it could be. I think people might have a have a hard time moving on from the 3DS, but um. I think it it. it top lantern. Yes, that's the one I can't do. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I I own a Wii U. It's just it's right over here. It's right to my left. A um, few get good games on the Wii U, but for the most part, yeah. Whoops. They clearly have been saving up. Uh, yeah. They've been saving up though. Uh, this like, we already have two AAA games from them, like the triple like top nineties, uh, top top like nine out of tens this year. And then Xenoblade Chronicles Two is gonna come out. Probably gonna be like an if I had a guess, it's probably gonna be like an 85, 90, like nothing amazing, but Nintendo's kind of pumping out some good games, right? And then there's the Kirby game coming out, Yoshi game coming out. Excited for those two as well. Pokemon, of course. Um, where's that? Gone out. Where can we get a flame? More jumping from the the big pot. Bad publicity. Yeah. They need to all hands on deck to make the switch work. My number one call right now. Which is a catalog. Lack of a, yeah, lack of a catalog definitely is always a concern. Um. I think considering that it's it's only been out for um what is that like s s seven months eight months uh it's pr it's pretty good like I think most games don't have but sorry most uh, consoles don't have like a huge catalog for a while like until like after the first year usually it's like it's like one one big system seller and then like later you know. And then later on, more come. So, I think we the Wii U lacked pretty much any system seller at the when it, when it launched that I'm aware of, at least. How to get fire up here? I mean, they're the same distance away. It just requires even more fine tuning. The more like more fine. Okay, let's go. Let's do. Let's go on a little tour. Let's let's see if we can find any uh, fire hammer brother guys.
Where is there? There's those, there's those guys. Ooh. What's up here? Oh, no, I've been up there, I think. True, and they're still gonna. Be, they're still working on on the games. Um, I know there are a few system sellers for me that I'm really looking forward to. There's a few exclusives that are coming as well. Um, Octopath Traveler was a big one. I think it's gonna be coming out the next year. Oh wait, there you go. There's a flyer guy. Got oh, this distracted. Um, uh, that's a, I think it's a pretty much a Switch exclusive uh, from Square Enix. Um, and then, but yeah, there's not much like talk, like talk about those games coming out yet. So they're slated for 2018, or like some some are, but are they actually gonna come out that year? Eh, that's the question. End of the day, I don't, you know, it, I don't really. Most games that I want to play, like, they either come out on Nintendo consoles or they come out on the PC on Steam. So, like, I usually don't buy cons like, like consoles for many games. Like, if there's, like, a good, like, three or four games for a console, that's usually, like, worth it for me. Um, are we done here? While moons are done, did not find those coins. And go to the next area, I guess. But I mean, it's always like a, it's a concern to get the games that uh that to, keep, to keep things um, moving with new content on the consoles is always a concern. Exclusives are a huge deal. Um, this is why Sony has been kicking butt. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean. I, I, if it wasn't for games like uh, like Bloodborne and uh, and uh, Neo and the exclusive deal that Salt and Sanctuary had for a little while, stuff like that, plenty of exclusive on, on Sony that are like, wow, that's I mean I want to play that, but like mostly, if you ha exactly you just you just said it right, like wait a bit, like if you wait a bit, it's it's, it's a time exclusivity on certain consoles sometimes, and then it comes out on PC. So that's what I do usually. Um, don't really worry too much about that. And it's great too because on PC you can you can mod and you can use cheat engine, which is great. I love doing that. Did, what? Really? Did it really come up, go up and go up in flames? I thought like Girltick, uh, one of our other viewers, you may probably ran into him. Uh, he was just saying that he was playing Destiny, too, recently. Well, uh, how did it go up in flames? All oh, right, there's a moon rock here as well. Oh, this area is so cool. Why couldn't there be more of this area? It's the best. It's so Dark Soulsy. I love it. Look at this dragon over here. Oh, it's oh, it's rad. Got that one already. Oh. 
Oh, there she is. This kingdom. Well, let's just say it's a fixer-upper. As long as I'm with Peach, I'll be fine, I'm sure. But I did find a power moon here. Hope it's useful to you on your travels. I think I've been to every place in the world. Oh, but I forgot there are places beyond the world. Alright, see you on the moon. Exhausted all the content by the time the PC launch happened, many people hit the world capital game. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not I'm not too big on MMOs. There are a couple of reasons for that. One is is sort of the grindy nature of MMOs. I don't really like the gear treadmill sort of uh, loop. <laughs> like a better word. Um, where is this? There it is. Like when I find if, if I'm gonna spend time getting gear, I want it to be, be to matter, you know, in a long game, long-term game like that, right? Also, not huge, not super huge on um, super huge on like rotations in in combat. So, like, I find. And this is my own opinion, of course. Games are different for every, every person. But I find that a lot of modern MMOs come down to uh, what buttons do I push in what order, and then you just do it again, do it forever, just constantly, forever. Like, you push, you get 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then you just kind of repeat some s sequence of abilities use them in a sequence, and then you just keep doing that forever. And the other thing that bothers me about MMOs is, like, I don't really like having to be, like, need, needing needing people to get to make progress. Like, it's nice to have friends that play with, play with you and stuff, but um, a lot of MMOs are like, well, you just, you just, you just can't beat this boss unless you have a, a party, right? And I've dealt with a lot of, like, and I've played an MMO before. I've played I played Final Fantasy XI for a very long time, and um, but a lot of it is sort of like there's a lot of drama that can arise in, in, a, in a game that's supposed to be fun uh, with people in your party, and it's just, sometimes it's just like I just want to play the video game, you know. Uh, my very long time is, is that you fight and make numbers get bigger, find the same mobs, get a marginally better equipment to for a bigger boss. Yeah, and Exactly, and there's sort of like, um, there's, you, you grind, you grind monsters to get a better weapon, so you can grind more, more monsters to get a better weapon, kind of thing. Like, I don't really find that super interesting. Um, I think, I mean, obviously I'm oversimplifying, right? I think, I think most people who would, who do like MMOs, I, I have plenty of friends and viewers, uh, who, who, do play lots of MMOs and stuff. Um, I mean, I mean, this is coming from a guy who has two at the same time. You know, he, I, I, I play a game over and over again, and I master that game. First of cycle, the only redeeming quality about MMOs is the social aspect. That's so funny that you say that. You say that because, um, I, I was looking, I was looking uh, around, just like uh, up on, like uh, looking it up. On Google and stuff, and I was, you know, what are people's opinions about MMOs? And um, most of them say like, "Wait, why do you play?" Like when asked, asked why you play the game, most people said the social aspects. And I'm like, "Oh, I mean, yeah, I guess, but I guess if you have friends that play it as well, maybe that's 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 the thing." But like, if you're not like, I mean, if you're not like really playing the game to enjoy the game, what's kind of what's the point, you know? There's the collaborate in WoW raids to take down a marble. Sure. Yeah, totally. I mean, you can totally respect that. I mean, that takes a lot of coordination, a lot of, uh, like, very real um, leadership understanding. Oh, a charge and check. Yeah, if you, I've heard the same thing about most multiple multiplayer games that, you know, they're, they're fun to play when you have people to play them with.
Oh, look at that. They're gone. Call of Duty's the same way, yeah. Um... Like I remember when I, back when I played Final Fantasy XI, even though I did have friends playing with me, it wasn't really. It's a very different MMO than um, modern modern MMOs. It was a game that was very difficult, and it, and it did fall into the the the, the, pro, the category of the problem I have, which is you know taking a long time to complete most things. Oh, this one's. Up here. Oh, I saw a sparkly. Aha. Uh -huh. Um, but so you know, I had friends playing with me. Uh, it was a game that took a long time to get anything done. It had been much impossible to do anything. Old school Final Fantasy XI was was hardcore. It was like you couldn't get anything done with it with, with by yourself. Um. But the community was really was really close knit as a result. Um, but the other thing that was significant for me that for me with that game was I don't need this guy anymore. Was uh, in modern MMOs there's that treadmill that that, that um, I think you I think you call it the rec recursive cycle. Um, when it took a long time to get a piece of gear in that game, but when you got it, it was good. Like it was good. For like sometimes years, like like, like I haven't played the game in a long time, like a couple like a couple of years now. But when I left, there was still a piece of gear that was good for one of your ring slots. It was a ring that was still like one of the best in slots, like eight years after it was released. You know, like it's so that's you know that was awesome because like that way it was like. Okay, you can kind of, kind of tell yourself, okay, well, it's going to take a while to get this item, but man, it's going to be great, and, you know. Is that every... Is this... Three left. There's this one here. But... In the end... Kind of annoying how... Um... At the end of the day, so like, because you need people to help you, you just, if you wanted to play that day, you, you, uh, you just have to wait for people to come be online. Uh, and then there's like, like, because you have to have a guild to really get things done, or like a, you know, a, a link shell in the case of Final Fantasy XI, a link shell. Um, just like eventually, you just, I kind of got tired of like being at the beck and call, ha having to be, like, having to make ske like, schedule, like, every night to be playing this game, right? That's like, I need to be doing other things, you know? Anyway, there's a lot of reasons why I'm not a huge fan of MMOs, it's just the, the, the design of it, the, the game design that is employed. Is the main reason, and yet, yet despite that, I think that, oh, uh, well, <laughs> despite that, uh, my dream game involves a lot of things in Final Fantasy XI, but it's more more about the lore and the content, how much content there was in eleven. Eleven, Final Fantasy XI was like a. I think now, by now, it's like a 17-year-old game. It has so much content. It's brimming with content. Um, it would have been, been awesome to be able to... to but like, my dream game would be, like, take Final Fantasy XI's content and options and customization because it has the awesome job system, which is mwah, just mwah, beautiful. Uh, and then take Final Fantasy XI's job system and... All the armor and weapons and gear and all that stuff, all that fun stuff, and then put it into like a Souls-like battle system, like, re like retool the game so it's like a Souls-like, so it's like Final Fantasy Souls, and that'd be like the that would be like, like probably like one of my favorite games, because it would have 
all the content and cool stuff and builds from from 17 years worth of worth of, of well let, let's say more like 12 years worth of cool gear but has the tactical sort of combat of souls obviously it would be a massive project but you know it's my I mean, it's a dream game there's one right here where's this one ah Open up. You're only delaying the inevitable star, moon, sun, item that you use that you use to do things, power things. It will break eventually. That always breaks. Come on. wrong <laughs> I like play ball like play catch with it like against this ball on this wall like ah No, I ah uh, uh, It went eh, when I tried to disconnect off of it. What am I doing wrong here? Usually it just requires. There you go. So I just, I just had to do that like three times. There's one over here. Oh, there it is. Horn here. There's this elusive one here. There's not really a lot of places where I can hide. Aha! Alright, this area is done. Next is Bowser's Kingdom. And then the Moon Kingdom. Rock. Ah, over 
here. Fair mountain here. Start from one end here. The next. I I even thought of like some cool like cool idea that like, they could do. I mean, obviously they never would, but uh, they were to make. Final Fantasy, like Final Fantasy Eleven, into a uh, a Souls game. There's a, there's cool ways you can do it. Let me get up there. So I can warp, like jump back to this this section. Um, like, in Souls, you have, Souls games, you have, uh, like, weapon arts, sort of, uh, ways to, ways to, uh, do different skills and other cool little things with weapons, and... You could totally bring over all the wep like weapon skills and, and spells and all that cool stuff from Eleven, and just assign like every weapon, every, every weapon with with uh, a cer a certain spells or a, like a spell or a skill or a um, um, ability or whatever it is. And you can assign each of the like like three to each to per weapon. And you could, um, make weapons have, like, every weapon or piece of armor have function, right? That's one of the things I, I would correct if I was a, like, a, if I had to say, like, what things would, what things would you, would you change about Dark Souls is that, well, weapons are great in Dark Souls. They're very unique and they're very cool and they're very, very situationally done and they're very cleverly made. But armor, a lot of times in Souls games, doesn't really matter that much, and it'd be nice to th to have it matter more, in my opinion. Because like whenever, whenever you find a weapon in Dark Souls, you're like, oh man, this is cool. This is a, a cool thing, and it, it's has this unique function, right? But you find for me when I find armor in in, Dark, in a Souls game, I'm like, okay, it's nice. It's just it's not it's not really a thing to get super excited about. Compared to weapons. Oh boy! Where are. Those are like little bird dudes. Do here. I think that is to focus on the dodge mechanic in the game and prioritizing that more than factoring against getting hit. Yeah, maybe. Um, but I think. There are also like other um, things in the game that d d does that, that do sort of like um, encourage you to try to try different things. Um, so like you can wear full havels and use havels great shield and all this stuff, right? So there are tools in the game that encourage you to not take hits necessarily, but to um, 
to block um, and use use um what is it called? Use poise to your advantage. Oop, not close. So even in, you know, Dark Souls One has awesome awesome. Well, it's mostly good poise in Dark Souls 1. Uh, Dark Souls 2, I think, in some ways improved it. And Dark Souls 3 also has it as well. So you don't you like you have stuff like, you know, heavy armor in general. You also have Havels, you have the Wolf Ring, you have the Lothric uh, Long Spear. All, the, all, these, all these tools. Um, Giant's Ring, Ring of Giants. All these are tools that sort of, like, encourage you to not take damage... But to be to act more tanky-ish, if you want to go that way, I think I think that's good. I think that's it's good when a game gives you lot, lots of lots of fun tools to play the game the way you want. Um, you know, but to it's cool to encourage you a certain encourage you to, to play a certain way. Uh, but the one, the one thing that bothers me about certain RP. Ooh, ugh, but certain RPGs is, is some RPGs will do a thing where it's not so much here's all these tools to use and you can kind of like create your own party and, and really feel like you're you're making making decisions yourself. Um, some games, even games in my favorite series, right? Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy series, one of my favorite favorite game series of all series of all time. Final Fantasy uh, three is a good example of that. So Final Fantasy three, there's the job system. The job system is usually amazing. FF5 has it, uh, Ten Two has it, Tactics has it, um, Bravely Default and Bravely Second have it. And the good fun thing about the job system is that you can make your your party be any role you want. And within those roles, you also have like different like gimmicks for each job. So you can really come up with like really cool like synergy synergistic things to do with. Um, the, the jobs if you if you're clever enough right I feel like it's cool when you come up with something that you thought of to see if it will work and then it works that's really fun um, but like in Final Fantasy 3 that was like the first time they they tried the prototype they, they tried like they tried the job system it was like an experimental thing kind of th kind of thing uh, and it really didn't work that well because what they ended up doing was instead of saying like here's the jobs go nuts see see how how much you can experiment and take advantage of the game really kind of like try to make it your own instead a lot of the fights in 13 and, and ff3 were more like oh you don't have four dragoons well you're just gonna die <laughs> you know so like it's restrictive not a, not a good thing. Because um, to me, an RPG is all is all about RPGs are all about giving you freedom to to mess around with the tools that developers give you to um, overcome an obstacle. Um, so I so sorry we got a little track off track there a little bit, but. Um, it could be that there's a, that there are certain, to a certain degree, there could be a, a focus on dodging, the, the, the dodge mechanics. It's a very important, uh, mechanic to the game. Um, but at the same time, I, I know that there are other, other tools in the games that encourage you to just come at problems different ways. How do I? Oh, I see. Oop. And I mean, and conversely, like there, are, there are more, there are more like sort of tanky tools in Dark Souls, but there are also like other tools that encourage you to be more agile. Um, so that's stuff like the, the what is it called? The Karthus Blood Ring, Articles 3. There's the, um, 
the um, Hunter's Bone and the Bloodborne. Uh, and the faster weapons as well, like the Blades of Mercy or the, the just general... The whole dagger category is mostly for fast attacks. But I, I could go on for a while about... Uh, Dark Souls and mechanics and things because I've played those games a lot and I, Dark Souls 2 is the only game I've ever ever did a semi oh hey look at that um, Dark Souls 3, 2 is the only game I've ever sort of semi sp sped run speed run I mean let's be clear again not like world record or anything like that but it's a game that I know very well. There you go. Perfect. That one's complete now. Um. I mean, it's, oh, look at that, three more. Oh, I found three coins. How did I miss these last time I was here? All right, still missing. Now I'm missing, now I'm missing six. The elusive six. Um. I saying, uh, I mean, yeah, I was, I was gonna say, uh, you have to consider like, um, the other fact is, it's, 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 it's cool how in Dark Souls it's possible to beat the game, even though it's, an, it's, it's an integral part of the game, like part of the game mechanic, like part of the game. It's an important game mechanic, essential game mechanic, to dodge. You can beat the game without dodging. So, it's so cool to me how. This essential mechanic that is that is as close to necessary as you can get still isn't necessary, isn't like mandatory. Like you can still, it's diff The game becomes different and it can be harder in a lot of ways, but it, it's possible to be beaten without dodging. And rather than instead, you just use your shield a lot, a lot, a lot. And it's it's very cool to me. Oh, I see. Oops. Oh. <laughs> oh. Where to go, Mario? And it's funny because, you know, people often say, you know, you like, oh, you like Dark Souls, you must like hard games then, right? Nope. <laughs> Actually, don't, don't play games because they're hard. You know, I think it's, that's a lot of, a lot of times it's the assumption. It's like, oh, it's because you like Dark Souls, so you must like hard games. But... I like I like Dark Souls in spite of how hard it is. <laughs> like I guess to put it that way. There's a lot of things that redeem that game from being really dumb with how hard it is. Like, I'm not especially fond of the mechanic where, um, depends on the game. Each game is a little different, but 
the general mechanic is just if you die the game gets harder <laughs> whether it's you know you losing your humanity and your souls in Dark Souls 1 and on and stuff or Dark Souls 2 you lose but you lose your max every time you die you lose a bit a little bit of maximum HP uh, like every all the games have that and just like that's not really a fun mechanic just to make the game harder every time you, you die it's, but Oh, I see. I see. I see. I see. Let's see what it wants me to do. Ooh. I don't know if you just blame the game for its design to make you fail. <laughs> no, I, I embrace the challenge. Um, my. Oop. Now I enjoy the game for what it what, for the its RPG elements, and my when I you just play the game. Yeah, I don't play the game. Um, it's more like this might sound silly to some people, but you know what my my view on how to like take a loss in a game like Dark Souls is. It, it, it very much theological, <laughs> um, you know. It's you're gonna try your best at something, right? And you. Oh, mess this, up. mess this up. I think. Hang on, I'm distracted. Oh, I'm not close to finishing that one. Um, I embrace the challenge because I enjoy the the game the gameplay. I think it's very well fleshed out. But I overcome the frustration of being beaten uh, because of my the way I see theology. So um, we know from scripture, from from God's word, that we should be trying our best at all things. Hmm. What am I doing wrong there? Oh, I know. I have an idea. Um, and so, we, we, you try your best. But, you know, the outcome isn't up to you, right? It's God, God's sovereign in all things. So that means that um, the, the outcome is, is something that God, in his infinite knowledge, is aware of. Is, is, is aware of and has determined and... Um, so, when I go into a game, I try to have that attitude of, okay, I'm gonna try my best because I believe that's what I, that's what we're told to do, that, you know, like from, from God's word. But if I lose, I lose, and it was it was gonna be that way, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and it can be a learning experience. It can it can. It can be a test of, of, of patience, and, and uh, uh, that can be a, a good thing, you know? There's always something to sort of learn about um, about what you're doing right or, like, right or wrong. It just can be a annoying process sometimes, but if you don't get, get into the mindset of like, oh, I'm, go I, I ha I, I, I'm gonna win this time. Because then what happens is if like if you plan on like winning, uh, how do I phrase it? How do I say this? Like, do you have the attitude of, you know, I'm gonna win this time for sure, and and if I don't, it's just gonna be the worst thing. Then you're gonna get super upset at things, and um. You're gonna have like have some, you know, self-control, you know, issue um, there. When really, I think the better attitude is, oh, oh, oh. Better attitude is, try your best. If you fail, you fail. And it's not like this is something that would, you know, God didn't uh, foresee, you know. 
I have a very, I have a very reformed, reformed uh, Christian theology about how to about playing video games, which might sound silly, but oh wait, I see how I have to do now. What? What? Respawn. There you go. Um, and actually, it has, has, has you know, helped me me a lot there. Uh, I don't really stress out too much about too many things because I know that, you know, God's the one in charge. So. Nope. Um, I mean, it's not... I'm still human, so I still mess up with, with that sometimes, but... Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we 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 can disagree on 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 that issue. That's a secondary issue, because personally, I am a Calvinist. Um, but uh, that doesn't mean I'm not, I'm a hyper Calvinist, or that I would say that Armenians are not saved or whatever. Uh, that's not that's not the correct way of looking at it, right? Um, it's just that um, different. There's people put up with different arguments about um, about how God saves. I would say that um, God is is completely sovereign, so he he ordains, right? So. Um, Hyper-Calvinism is the idea, I think it's all answered this way, Hyper-Calvinism is, is the idea that um, either you have, humans have no free will, which I do not believe, nor do, nor do I believe the Bible teaches that. Oh, hey, look. Lone cactus by a cliff and a slope. Okay. Take a picture of that. Um, so... The sort of the classical Calvinistic position would be that um, uh, people have they don't have an autonomous free will; they have a creaturely will. So they make real like choices that are that are have real consequences, and they're culpable for the things that that they they, that they do that are wrong. But they're done within the sovereignty of, of God still. So, um... I think as long as you know about compatibilism, um, then that'll do, go a long way in helping you not be too too overly cal Calvinistic. Um, because there is a, cha a, like a chance that you would be too... You would think that there's no free will, or whatever, or that... Um, I heard some 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 um, hyper Calvinists would say like, oh well, Calvinism is the right way of looking at soteri or, uh, soteriology, the doctrine of salvation, and Armenians just aren't saved. And I that's don't, don't I just don't think that's how that works. Um, there are plenty of people who I know who are godly people who believe all the primary Christian doctrines. Um, who are Armenian, and that's that's just that's just fine, right? Um, it, that's why it's, I, it's so important that we distinguish between primary Christian doctrines, doctrines that like are necessary to believe to say you're a Christian, versus the ones that are secondary, ones that are we can debate about and have some have some in-house dialogue about, but not call each other like heathens because we don't believe certain things um, and so you have to you have to we have to delineate between those things and then there's like the, the tertiary issues of Christianity which are like more like um, things that it's the, it's the things that that aren't about salvation you know um, the things that that are the Greek the Greek word for it is audiophora so audiophora is, you know, things that are neither condoned nor condemned in the Bible. They're just things that um, 
we have different um, convictions about. So, like, tertiary issue stuff is stuff like, um, some examples, um, you know, going to movies, dancing, uh, listening to music, um, playing video games, um, getting a tattoo, uh, all these sorts of things that are, like, the Bible doesn't say whether you should or shouldn't do it, so it's more like, it's up to the individual conviction, being aware of loving your neighbor, uh, in the, in the midst of that as well. But, those are the tertiary things, you know, as long as we can agree on, Christians can agree on the, on the primaries, then, oops, then we can disagree on secondary things. doing here? Oh, I see. I'm getting the shards. Like, um, there's another example of a hyper-Calvinism. Hyper-Calvinism, uh, would also say that, um, well, God's, you know, God's sovereign in all things, so... Let's just not evangelize or do anything because, you know, it's going to happen the way God, it's going to happen. But the thing with that, the problem with that is you're just going, at that point, you're going against what God's word actually says. Like, we can talk all day about what God has decided in his, in his decree about, the, about, in his decree about what he wants the world to do, like, how he wants the world to progress. Um, but we, that's not, that's not, that information is not given to us. Right? So, what information is given to us is his word, the Bible. So, to say, well, um, God's going to ordain everything, so we just shouldn't even worry, or worry about evangelizing or doing anything good. Well, that would be just going against what God's actually, actually like, handed down word says. So we operate on what we, what we do know, not on what we don't know. What we do know is that God says, do your best. Evangelize. Um, um, uh, work unto, as an, unto the Lord. All those kinds of things, right? So we operate on that basis. Not on some um, perceived um, perceived sort of uh, um, will that God has, and so I'm not going to worry about it. Um. You know, uh, some, uh, most of my uh, good friends um, in the church would say, Paul, I think if you ask them what happens then, where there's still contention between people about the primary Christian doctrines. Um... Well, first we have to, like, um, define what the doctrines are, and then we can, um, discuss those issues. So, like, obviously the primary Christian doctrines are stuff like, um, Jesus is the Messiah. You know, he rose again from, from, from the dead. Uh, he, he was the propitiation of, for sins, and, um, uh, faith alone, um, Faith alone, by grace alone, um, um, sola scriptura, which is like scripture alone, uh, not by works, that we're, we're not saved by works, um, what happens is still contention between people about the primary Christian doctrines. Well, if there's a, a, a contention between people about those primaries, about like, uh, Jesus being the only way to salvation, um, I think other things, things like that. Then at that point, I would say that would be more want, needing to talk about the necessity of there to, for there to be a savior for his for to for sins. You know how we are sinners in God's sight. Um, like basically talking to someone as if they aren't Christians because I mean they, they clearly are are not. Then come down here, rats. 
Um, because, I mean, like, the, the primary Christian doctrines are what separates Christians from non-Christians, right? It's, it's what, it's, it's how you determine who believes Jesus for salvation, right? So, we can, we can say that, well, if you don't believe that, um, Christ died for the forgiveness of sins, so that we can be reconciled with the thought with the Father. Um, what what do you believe? Like, how do you how, how can you believe? How can you say that you're a Christian, but not believe such things? You know. Yeah, and and of course we want to we want to comfort people at all times. Um, our our words should be seasoned with with love because that's that's, that's just it, right? We evangelize um, because we love people and because we also want to see them um, see them saved. We, we 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 love people and they're and therefore we want to see them saved, right? We want to see them um, um, be forgiven of their sins. The sins of before we that they had before God. Um, I think it's always important to give people um, the gospel, um, but to give the gospel in a way that is sort of full formed. So, for example, um, a lot of times people will, you know, if you ask them, "Are you a good person?" Would you consider yourself to be a good person? Most, mo usually, they'll say, "Yeah, I think I'm a good person." But see, according to God's word, they're not good people. No one's a good person. They're, no one, no one does good. No, not one. Um, uh, all our righteousness is, is, is as filth, filthy rags in God's sight. So it's all, even our, our best, our our best, quote unquote, is. Is just refuse in God's sight compared to how the the necessary requirements of the law, right? Well, it also says elsewhere in Scripture, uh, if you break the law in one place, you've broken it. You've broken the whole law. You know, so I think properly f like f um, informing people that okay, well, you consider yourself to be a good person. You say you're you, you say you're you're a good person, but according to God's law, I mean, have you ever have you ever stolen? Most people have. Have you ever told a lie? Have you ever um, um, committed adultery? Keeping in mind that, Je that Jesus said, uh, if you look at a, w a woman with lust, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Like These are all questions that if, if you ask the, any person, they would probably say, yeah, I've done all those things. So... Once you understand that, like, you're not a good person, like, why... Then you can understand why you need a savior, right? From the just judge of, of, of the earth. From, from, from God the Father, you know? Because if you don't need... If you're, if you're a good person, then you don't need a savior. You don't need uh, someone to save you from your sins. You can just get, get to heaven by your own works. Which has never, which has never been the, been the gospel message, right? Whoops. Uh oh. Ah. Uh, uh. Well, found the other star. Um. So I, I, when I, whenever I give the gospel, I like to, to, talk about the, the bad news that you know you're not a good person, that you're a sinner, but that God is an amazing savior. And that he can save you from your from your sins, the sins that you have committed, that we've. Whoop. Sins that that the Bible says are sins, you know, they're not just like. They're not just um. You know, little mistakes. You know, they're not just like. Um, just some passing thing, like a sin against a holy, righteous God, 
the, the, the god who gives you breath and life. You sin against him in numerous times, you know? And so, but know that, that, you know, God, even though you have done all these horrible things, God is still willing to forgive you. God, not only did God... People have this idea that, like, God made us sort of a deistic, deistic kind of idea, like, God can, can made us and then kind of just, like, left us alone. But you know what? The Christian God, the, the, the Christian gospel is not, not, not like, like that. It is... God was willing to become part of, come into the world, and take part in the world, and save those who don't deserve it. And that's that's the true beauty of the gospel is that we don't deserve what we what we're given. It's awesome. It's... Oh. And, we, and it's it's really cool because. Because when you go, when you live your life like understanding that, wow, Jesus died for me when I when I didn't deserve it, deserve to be saved, and I didn't, I, God wasn't getting anything good from the, this arrangement. You know, like he wasn't getting this really super cool person that is so smart and so funny or whatever. It's just he 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 loved us enough to die for us when we were still sinners. Christ died for us. But I think a lot of times what happens is people will give the gospel and, well, it's completely well-intentioned, totally well-intentioned. And, you know, they, they might give the gospel, but they might, um, like, only tell people that they're, you know, God died for them and, and good. I mean, rightly so, right? But they, they, but they might not understand that they're sinners, you know? Like... I, I, in my experience, I've heard I, I've had some people in my in my life, you know, I, I've given them the gospel and I told them that you know, like God is so loves you, right? But they didn't, it didn't matter to them, you know, because because they they they're self righteous. They, they thought that they were good, they were good people. Like they, like look, God will, God will, God will accept me into heaven because. You know, I'm not, I'm not Hitler or anything, right? Like, Hitler's going, is gonna go to hell, but, you know, like, I'm, I'm a pretty good guy, right? But that's not the, that's not what the scripture says. Because we're all sinners. Me, me, you, everyone, right? <laughs> Psycho. <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah, we're, we're going, we're going a little late tonight. Um... Anyway, that's the, that's, the, that's the two things uh, that I can go on and on about, is uh, video games and theology. <laughs> if you get me going on that tangent. Um, but I'm happy to talk about either thing. I appreciate your comments, Nemo. What was I doing next? Um... I mean, and my the like you know, my uh, the reason I'm able to talk talk so long about theology is uh, if you've seen my, some Christian Consoles episodes, you probably already know this, but um, you know, I, my my day job is very theological related, theology related. Um, my job is to find content for Biodiscovery TV, which is like a 24-hour streaming network. Um, and part of the job description is like um, pouring over lots of like th like th theologians and and scholars and and teachers and all this kind of stuff. Um, just to see how, like how how well their how good their theology is and if it lines up with the sort of the mission statement of Bio Discovery TV. So that's what I do like most of the day. <laughs> so like I've been doing that for like um, probably 10 years now. 
Oops. So as a result, like, even though I have no, like, formal education, I have no, like, formal theological training, I have, like, a layman, a, a layman training from all of the, all of the content I have to, like, proof watch every day. There you go. So that, that, that kind of explains why I'm able to... What? Huh? What? Huh? I see. Get move yourself. Ooh. So yeah, that's why I'm able to sort of like talk at length about theological things, even though I'm not. I don't have an official, like a official doctorate or whatever. Or like a I'm not trained in a, from a school. But. Let's. I just go up here, right? <laughs> and the Pastor Rod, yeah, yeah. Between between Pastor Rod and uh, um, between the, like the, his his tutelage and the tutelage of uh, many people is, yeah. Oh, hurry! It's, 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 I feel like it's it's been really good for me. Um. Oh. I should just ground pound instead. Nope, got it anyway. That's good. Ugh. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention about about that is um, I said I, said I was I was a Calvinist, but I'm like a I'm like. I'm relatively like a new Calvinist. Like I used to be Armenian because that's kind of just that's the only way I was taught to think about salvation. Um, that's sort of like sort of like a um, you know man-centered sort of way of approaching soteriology and and salvation. But um, you know, it's good to be to challenge yourself as a Christian to to not stay in your bubble. You know, like to Hear different points of view. Hear different, um, different brothers in the, in the Lord. Uh, they have different. They have different um, um, ways of understanding Scripture. Um, and as long as they're not, they're not heretical. Again, we're, we're understanding the primary Christian doctrines. Um, then we can discuss it, and it's it's what what lines up better with the the original intent of the of the authors of the scriptures of the 66 books, you know? I don't know where to, where to do here. I'm assuming I'm just going to go on down here. Okay, just long jump that, I think. Yes! So this is a race throughout the entire kingdom. A race from the top to the bottom. jump backflip backflip there we go but uh yeah uh so i am sort of a new ish calvinist only in the last couple of years have i really um been challenged by sort of calvinistic uh teachers and i'm like they say it makes a lot of sense, you know, like from what for what the Bible is trying to say, you know. Uh, 
Um, hmm. Well, I wouldn't say that the original. I wouldn't say the original meaning of the Bible is in contention. I would say that. Um. Well, first of all, I would say that the Bible is the greatest, the most, uh, the most attested ancient document we have in the world. Nothing comes close to its. Um, you may have manuscripts and papyri and other things we have like like that to authenticate what the Bible said originally to uh, the the Hebrew or the Greek people to whom it was written. Um, I would say that the original meaning isn't so much under contention. It's really more how many translations there are and understanding of. Um, of how you translate, because to translate something, um, okay, maybe I say one-to-one -one meaning conversion over time. Um, oh! That's why I tend to appreciate um, the formal equivalence translations more. So, like, I, I one of my favorite translations is the NASB, the New American Standard Bible. It's done by many scholars who, um, you know, who know Greek, who make a point to. Translate exactly as as it was written. Um, you know, if that means that it's, something's a little hard to understand, that's okay. So long as it's it's exactly what as close as we can get to what the original intention was uh, for those people, for the original uh, to people the, the original people to whom it was it was written. So some people look for other translations, like uh, uh, more more dynamic equivalent translations, so more thought for thought, like the um, N the NIV or um, New Living. That's the New International Version. Um, or what else? Um, maybe the N the NL. What's it called? NLT, the New Living Translation, but. Uh, I think it's a little bit few off for me. There's sort of a spectrum, right, between like formal equivalence, which is like word for word, and then like the message. The uh, the message, yeah, the original uh, intention of the author, because right? I mean, it's we the there's a context, a cultural context for to whom it was written, right? To who the the, the text was written, so. Um, the message is, is oh oh you, oh sorry I mean the message Bible, I see right the message the translation the message, I see, okay um yeah <laughs> um what are my thoughts about the, the message translation um I don't know too much about the the message translation that that's definitely a very it's a very 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 like. Dynamic equivalent one. Not a too too big a fan on a fan of that one personally again because I feel like I I wanted to know exactly what was said to the people to whom it was written. So even though it might it might some translations might be good for like um um that's the wrong place. That's the wrong place. Some some other translations might be might be good for like devotionals and stuff. Uh, I really want to know. Yes. Well, I agree. Um, it's watered down um, to an in, 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 to an almost dangerous degree. Um, uh, um, 
because because if you if you water down too much, you know, for for the ease of reading, you're you're gonna lose a lot of the theological depth to to what's being said because there are some some because there are some things, um, that are I mean it's not like a shocker to to anybody but. There are some things in the Bible that are kind of a little hard to understand, right? They're a little bit because because hard to understand because they're they're about God. They're about like that thing's pushing. Ah, the Bible's supposed to be easy to read. Um, I I think always a, always a good starting point whenever you have you have a have any question. Is a sort of I have a sort of two pronged approach, right? Think of it. Think of it about putting something, putting a concept or a question on a spit, right? And there's a two pronged approach, right? So that way, you know, it's defining terms and making distinctions, right? And once you you apply those two prongs to any concept or question, you can then turn it and every which way and see all the facets, right? So and you can see things clearly. So is the Bible supposed to be easy to read? That, de that depends how you define easy, because Jesus said that um, his burden is, is easy, his yoke, his, his yoke is easy, his burden is light, All right? So in one sense, I'd say that it's easy to read, it's easy to read and, and be saved. Um, Christianity is a, is a brilliant, brilliant, God was brilliant when he, when he, does, he created us, he created the, his, when he sent down his word to us. Uh, because it's it's easy to read, it's easy enough to read and understand what is necessary for salvation and for for help. But it's also so theologically rich and four and three, four, five dimensional that you can spend your whole life studying it and never reach the end of it. Um, so, is the Bible supposed to be easy to read? I would say that. In, in a, in a sense, <laughs> it can be sometimes it can be a matter of semantics, but I think also it can it's it's sometimes we can get stuck on the semantics, right? It's a, we can get stuck on certain words and certain concepts. Um, elementary school comprehension level, yeah, I, I believe that the Bible is uh, comprehensible to that to that degree because. Um, kids may not have a full understanding of, you know, provenient, you know, concepts of like, you know, like, um, the, the, uh, limited atonement and soteriology and epistemology and all these kinds of things, but they do know that, um, I'm made by God and God loves me and that, um, uh, God... Jesus died for me so that I could be with with God in heaven, and I can be, and I should I should do things that make God happy, makes God happy, and stuff like that. Like so, there is stuff in the Bible that is like, in one, one sense it is simple to understand, but in another sense it's hard. But in a good way, <laughs> it's hard in a in a challenging way because it's talking about things of God. So. <laughs> Oh wait, it's this one. All right, well, let's let's do that one. Yes, I know that uh, sometimes it can be a little, um, can be a little um, uh, like frustrating sometimes to be like have to use words carefully, but um, I find that that can be useful to make sure that you don't get. Get like lost because there's sometimes people will people have different ideas about what words mean in their heads. So like when you before you engage in in like a debate, right? You usually have to like make sure everyone is like sort of clear on what we're talking about. Like what we're talking about this, right? Like um 
there was someone uh, in the in the God Squad. I think it was uh, Pastor Bose did did a stream. Someone was asking like, um, this is gonna be sound like, may, sound, may sound like a silly example to some people, but it's I mean it's it's a question that required distinctions, right? And that was like um, the question was, so, um. In some ways, yeah, like it's very true. There are other languages that use a, a, a lots of words that have very nuanced um, definitions. English is very can be very very broad a lot of times. So, but the, the example that I, I'm talking about is one one fellow. Who, he was like, um, he was like, "Hey, you guys believe in?" Yes, that's right. I was actually I was thinking Greek. Um, I think I've heard I've, in Hebrew. Yeah, I've heard it said. I'm not sure if this is true, but I've just heard it said that like uh, the Eskimos have like 40 different words <laughs> in every language under the sun. Um, that like Eskimos have like 40 different words for snow or something, and so that's kind of interesting. But regardless, um, so the example I want I wanted to give was um was um he was like one of the, someone someone in chat was like you say you believe in the holy ghost but aren't ghosts bad things and and, it, and at first you go well well hang on w wait <laughs> i mean i'm talking about two different things here so let's so that's this is why sometimes it's important because people might have the wrong idea about the words that you mean right and it's like, well, no, we don't mean, I don't mean, like, ghost, like a Hollywood ghost. Right, exactly. So sometimes you have to unpack loaded questions, you know? It's a good, it's a good, it's a good word. I like that word, loaded question, because loaded implies that it's loaded up, which means you have to unpack it, unburden it, right? Because it's all loaded. So, okay, so we call, we say the Holy Ghost, but we, we sometimes say the Holy Spirit now. Like, modern, modern vernacular is saying more like the Holy Spirit. And it doesn't mean the same thing as Hollywood ghosts, you know? So that's one example that I, I, I've seen. I'm just checking the perimeter here because I need to find a lone cactus. Ah, right here. Gotta be right here somewhere. Yeah. Or like, um, here's another question. Um, making making distinctions between uh, words that are commonly equivocated. Equivocation is a very common thing in the English language. Um. It's equivocation is when you take a word that um, has two two definitions to two different people, but you use it in a sense in in a, in a way that will mislead people. So um, you, you sort of conflate what the meaning is. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying it. You, I'm enjoying it too. I like talking about about this stuff. Best of a week, huh? Yeah. I hear ya. Um, so stressful. I mean, sorry, stressful. <laughs> so, um, what are they saying? So, right, another example is the word evolution. Okay, so evolution can be used in two different senses. Evolution can be used to mean, uh, I should go back to where I was. Evolution can be used, used in the sense of, like, particles to people, macro, um, uh, uh, goo to you via the zoo, uh, sort of evolution. Or evolution can mean, uh, well, gr uh, development, gradual development, um, which Christians, uh, I think, creationists, not Christians, cre not Christians, creationists, would except because that's in the Bible it's in the Bible that even when Abraham um, uh, was you know breeding sheep he bred sheep a certain way so that they would be either speckled or 
or one color or whatever. And so he, because he understood that, oh, well, people will, breeding works this way. So I can sort of, animals will adapt over time um, because it's in their, their genetic code to do so. But that's something that that, that, I, that creationists uh, would affirm is because is, we can see that we see that happening all around us every day people adapt to environments um, But then an evolutionist would say uh, how can you not believe in evolution? So like the key word there is evolution It's happening all around us evolution well if by evolution you mean small changes and ad adaptation happening within the species then yes, I do believe that, that that's happening because I see it. It's observable. But if you mean by evolution that we came into being through unguided processes, God doesn't exist, and we are simply a bag of chemicals, I don't believe that. So, but he's using the word evolution as a, in a way to be like, how can you, how can you not believe believe in evolution? Believe in evolution. That depends on what you mean <laughs> on that word. So. Stressful, but but uh, going back to the stressful week thing. Uh, stressful week, you say. Um, let's hope that you can uh, you can uh, un unwind. Um, hopefully, you know, maybe find yourself, you know, go to church and and get some some building up and some um, some. What's the word? Um, Proverbs. Proverbs 27. I think it's 2717. As iron sharpens iron, so um, a, one sharpens another. So, you know, when you go to church, there's great edification and... Um, and Oh, I found it. And support that should be coming from, from church, right? I hope, I hope that, that you, you get that. Um... Hope that you get a chance to unwind and and take it easy uh, this weekend. And uh, yeah, that one was there the whole time. I just missed it. Oop. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. I think. Cause I was talking about Dark Souls, right? It's so it's so funny the way the way like God used that because like someone will often like say to me like how do you how do you um <laughs> not get so stressed out about like so stressed out and frustrated at Dark Souls? And I'm like thanks for the thanks for the in. Let's talk about theology. <laughs> like God like uses uses my uh my appreciation and my um with the fun I have with Dark Souls to sometimes like get get a theological point across. Because people will be like, how do you how are you saying so like just not bothered by you just dying constantly? You're like, well I'll tell you. <laughs> and again, it's not I'm not perfect, right? So I, I do sometimes get frustrated too. Um Try and remember myself in light of scripture. Hello. I'm fascinated by those creatures with the beaks that stretch out to poke things. Wish I could see one up close. Got you. Poke things. Poke things, guys. <laughs> Yeah, it's sometimes when people when you talk theology, people are under the assumption that, oh, talking about theology and all this stuff, you must think you're so good, you think you're so you got it all under control, right? You know, but like just because you 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 talk about something doesn't mean that you're necessarily you necessarily mastered it, <laughs> right? Oh, ooh, ah, look at that. So like you can you can know something about some you can know something about a, a, a subject without having it 
down pat at having it having mastered it, right? So <clears throat> Where are you? What? Oh, I think are you over here? Yeah. So glad that to, to just to hear that um, you know you find this conversation, these conversations so edifying. You know, like I'm totally willing that this is why um, what I want, what I and Octo want to do. You know, uh, with the, the channel, with the channel, I want a place to hang out and stuff, and but at the same time not be afraid to just take a question from chat and be like, like, hey, well, let's see how, what we can do to talk about it, right? I'm glad that uh, you find it so useful. <clears throat> dun, 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 dun. Wait, which way? Oh, it's over. It's down here. Oop! I see spots. Read, read, chat. Uh, uh, isn't safe either. Uh. Ah, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, the, the important thing I think to get across to people sometimes is that like, just because, like. I'm saying I'm a Christian. That doesn't mean I'm a better person <laughs> than you. Like I'm like this is where the beauty of the of the true understanding of the gospel comes in, right? When you when you make it clear, like, look, I'm not a, a I'm not a Christian because I'm a good because I'm a better kind of person. You know, like I'm a, I'm a I'm a Christian because God had mercy on me. God had mercy on me when I was when I was yet sinning. Christ died for me. Like that's that's what that's why I'm a Christian. So, but you're right. People will have, often have the understanding that this is the thought that, oh, you're a Christian. You must think you're so holier than thou. You think you're so, so great. It's like no. If you understand the understand the gospel truly, it's very much the opposite. You understand what a wretch you are. You know that the the amazing grace, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And it's that's very theological, theologically. Uh, useful oh there we go your theologically uh useful and accurate song it's like you are a wretch you are a wretch and then god gave you amazing grace um i think what i think what what the hard thing is sometimes can be is um finding the balance between um oh hey we got them all one of those coins are missing, though. That's good. Playing the balance between um, speaking truth in love, right? Because sometimes people, these these days, postmodern thinking is a very postmodern thinking. Relativism is very much like if you speak truth, you're being unloving. And it's like, well, no. There, there's 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 love. There, there's love that is shown when you speak truth, but you have to do it in a way that is so well balanced, you know, because you can't be all like all, um, all grace but no truth, but you can't be all truth and no grace, you know? We're, we're going to do an episode in the future of Christ and Consoles about, um, like, balance, the balancing act. People don't like being corrected anymore, that's right. It's very, it's very important to be able to do that, and it's not easy for, for anyone to, to, to be told, like, hey, um, you know, what you're thinking, the way you're thinking right now about this, that, or the other is just, is wrong. You know, what, a part of, of your life is incorrect, right? People want to be affirmed in whatever it is that they believe, but truth is truth and falsehood is falsehood and there's a balance to strike there, you know? And it's not always easy to, to, to 
to know the proper balance. Did I already do this one? I did do this one already. Let's see what the last two moons are. So it's, it's, a sign of, it's a sign of maturity, of 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 um spiritual and and uh, emotional, mental maturity, to um be willing to be corrected when you're you're not thinking clearly, and, that, and that's something that we all have to work on. We're we're all on on, on our way. I wasted that fifty coins. This is, this guy's right here. Out of this world, we got you got up here. You've come a long way, a long, long way since the Sand Kingdom. Don't you just love the stars? Here, take this as a gift for you. Um, and, they're gonna, and the other thing is that we have to be patient with each other. Hard to beat this place, but how about, uh, let's see, a kingdom with the rarest mushrooms anywhere. A lot of challenge, a friend, do I have a place for you? Just gotta give the car a lot of gas first. Um, you have to be gracious with each other because God... Once we're Christians and we we become justified uh, through Christ's sacrifice, we then begin the pro the long process of sanctification, which is the theological word for the lifelong process of becoming more like Christ. And 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 each of us are different different stages of that, and are different um um we're we're being worked on by God in different ways. So some areas where I have no problem with, no temptation, no, um, um, there's no problem. Uh, other people might have a bigger problem than that, and vice versa. There are some v uh, vices that I'm prone to that others aren't, and we kind of have to be willing to be gracious in that. Oop, 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 oop. Uh, which is not always easy to do, um, when, especially when it's something, something that you don't don't really struggle with too much, because you're just like, well, how could anyone have a hard like a hard time, you know, with this issue or with this, um, this sort of uh, vice, uh, 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 you know, anger or bitterness or or um, gluttony, or anything. There's so many. Oh, I think I heard Peach. Oop, oop, oop. There we go. How beautiful. Our entire world right there in front of us. I wonder where Bonneton is. It must look so small from here. Oh, and this power moon came flying in from outer space. Would you like it? You know, Peach... I don't know, I just feel like you're holding out on me. It's, it's all so convenient. You know? I've been away for quite a while. I should head back before anyone starts to worry. Okay. Maybe we'll go back to the Mushroom Kingdom, too. And just see how, what, what went on there. Probably get a few more of those achievement moons. And then I may I may have to call it, because it's getting a little late-tastic. Things there, ugh. Mushroom. Um, it is funny though that we live in a an age of um of relativism because it's such a nonsense philosophy, you know. It doesn't make sense if you think about it for more than a second. <laughs> um. Uh, didn't the car dude come? Oh, there he is. Oh. Gain more time with more legends and often my new friends. We'll have to have to leave early or skip a class because of so and so. Or this statue is spraying. Hmm. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, I guess if you're in the university, you, you would you would um deal with that. 
Um, I mean, it, that's the, that's the the thing is is part of what the Western you know foundation is built upon a certain diet when they cannot or they can't eat pork, right? Yeah, very common. Uh, many Middle Eastern religions uh, have that uh, precept. Don't be surprised, but I am. It's you. Remember that when we met in the Sand Kingdom? I love this place. Gentle, peaceful. Makes me want to settle down. Well, at least take this. Or at least give you this. Um. Yeah, we don't, we don't have such things in Christianity because of, um, you know, we have the uh, Apostle Paul, the letters to the church, talking about um, things being clean. Uh, the Book of Acts talks about all, all foods being clean. Uh, it's really more about Christian liberty. Actually, a lot of the Western Western civilization is based on Judeo-Christian ethic, the ethic that you have liberty, true liberty to do what you want. But, you know, originally that was meant to be in the context of a, a religious people, people who were were, were, were governed by the, the by God, by, by, by the God's standards of, in the Bible. So, um, one second. Got one more place to go, back to the Sand Kingdom. Glad to, be, glad to, friend. I'll get you home just as soon as I can. Hope the Andy freeze. Um. So, for example, there's a whole like talk about a lot of talk about like hate speech and all this kind of stuff. Like sp the speech being, you know, bad. You shouldn't say it. Maybe we should criminalize it, right? Well, originally, like we like the idea was, look, people should be free to say whatever they want, and that's good. People should be free to say what they want. But that was. A rule that was formulated with the understanding that people would be be governed by scripture, would be be self 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 governed, right? Would would love their neighbor. So like they could say whatever they want, but also love your neighbor. So there's that, you know. So I think it was John Adams who said um, the Constitution, the the Constitution of America, specifically. Uh, is was designed for I'm, I'm paraphrasing the constitution was designed for a religious people it is wholly uh, inadequate for the governance of any other so he, he, even though say, say what you will about some of the founding fathers of, of America's America uh, he at least understood that like we're writing the con this constitution with the understanding that you're gonna be a religious people, that you're gonna be, you're gonna, you're gonna, ah! oh. that you're gonna like, be governed by God's word, as the 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 the, the centerpiece of how, how to properly formulate and and use these laws and these amendments and, and all of this. So, like free speech is a great thing, and it's a good, it's a great thing, a good thing. Because it's, 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 well, Peach is out here, somewhere. Oh, I see, he's up, he's up there. Um, free, speech, free speech is a great thing, and it should be free. It should, you know, people should be able to say whatever they want. But you also need to love your neighbor, right? So, the problem is that now we're doing, we're, we're, we have things about free speech but we we don't have god to to give free speech context right so people will will say huh well we have to stop people from saying mean things so we'll just make it so people just can't say certain words and it's like well that's not the right way to do about it either because you're 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 abandoning the the proper balance my travels with tiara were wonderful so many memories and i realized something how important it is to see different things and talk with different people. That no matter what kingdom you're in, people smile with the same little sparkle. We have to, to do what we can with our time to put smiles on as many faces as possible. So I've decided to invite people from all over the world to the castle. Our travels were just wonderful. So many smiling faces. Picked up one last power moon as a souvenir for you. Actually, that, that reminds me of something I... I... Just as you were saying... <laughs> That's right. But actually, this remind me. Oh, wait, you're still on your journey, right? Right, Mario? Cappy? Good luck out there. Um, That reminds me. She was saying, like, you know, everyone has smiling faces, and, that, and that's good. Right? Again, let's, let's be clear. Good. But 
I saw a comic today, a comic like yesterday, or the day before, and this comic was like, was, was a little comic, it was supposed to be like, like a little like uplifting kind of comic, and it was like, um, so today someone stole my bike. It's, it's like a four panel thing. Today someone stole my bike, and I was really bummed out, but then I realized the person who had the bike was really happy, and that made me happy, and that was, that's good. There's more happiness in the world now because my bike was stolen. And it was supposed to be uplifting, but it wasn't. Because you think if you think about it, it's actually not uplifting at all. Because he was saying, hmm, you know, people doing bad things, that's making him happy. And that's, that's just great. <laughs> it's like, there's more happiness in the world now because something was stolen from me. Like, a sin was committed. Isn't that, isn't that nice? And it's like, there are plenty of people in the world who who do bad things, and they're they're happy about it. I mean, so it, happiness doesn't equal better that that you're better because you're happier, you know. So that was kind of a funny little comic. Yeah, it's sort of like is he was trying to like he was trying to to make make a make a comic about um trying to see things in a new way, but. All I, I saw there was like, you're just, you're happy that someone else did something bad. Like, when really, just because they're happy doesn't, like, more happy doesn't mean that they're, that the world's a better place now. You know, because happiness doesn't equal good, necessarily. <clears throat> Moon Liberator. Uh, did I get all the achievements? World Warper. How are we doing? Ooh. Where's this one? And then there's Souvenir Savant. We have five more souvenirs. And, ah, and art. Lots more hint art. And then this one, number 42. Be left. Uh Well we can we can finally get that last moon in the Sand Kingdom now. Eight sixty one, we're getting pretty close. Tomorrow should be the assuming I'm able to stream tomorrow, it should be the last the finale. Uh let's go get the Sand Kingdom Moon and then we'll we'll wrap it up. I turn the noise gate on my on the, my mic up a certain amount so that way you don't hear anything. You only hear any of my voice. But sometimes when I crack myself, myself, you can hear it. Oh hey, taxi's back. Hey, welcome back. Who knew I'd meet you here, see you all over, and meet you here again? Crazy. I love home. Nowhere nicer. Nowhere friendlier. But great to bump into you everywhere. So here's a gift. Glad to be your driver. It's been quite a ride. I'll never forget it. Trip of a lifetime. Okay, so let's one final sort of tally here. So, uh, Mushroom Kingdom has three stars left, moons left. Cap is done. Cascade's done. Sand is done. Lake's done. Wooded. Cloud's good. Lost is good. Metro, good. Snow, done. Seaside needs three more purples. Luncheon needs three more purples. We're done with the stars there. Ruin Kingdom's good. Uh, four more. If, uh, no, six more there. Six more in Bowser's Kingdom. Three in Moon Kingdom. And then off to Darker Side and Dark Side. 
of the moon. So yeah, we're super close. Oh, this was fun. This was this was a fun uh, stream. Um, always fun fun to play some games and, and chat about whatever. Um, I certainly hope that Nemo, you have a good night. Um, and to any other viewers who tuned in, um, uh, just ch check the panels below for all the information about what's going on in the thing and on this channel. Like, <laughs> yeah, I also feel like, yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Nemo. Um, yeah, I think the 999 is a bit much too. Uh, but yeah, check the panels below, follow if you haven't, anyone who's watching, um, and, um, thank you so much, uh, for hanging out with me and, uh, just coming along on the journey, uh, through games and just, yeah. Uh, okay, with that, I will have, uh, say goodnight to you, goodnight to Nemo, and, uh, and, uh, have a good day.